The highest priced yearling colt to enter Ballydoyle that year, Camelot clearly looked the part. And once installed at Ballydoyle, the handsome son of Monsieur continued to impress his trainer, thus earning his name, which had been reserved with Weatherby's for some 10 years. Making his debut in a Leperstown maiden in July, Camelot's lofty reputation preceded him and he was sent off the three to one on favourite. Camelot stretching on is going to land the odds. Camelot wins by two lengths. Next stop was the Group 1 Racing Post Trophy. Again he was sent off odds on and again he won with a minimum of fuss. Still O'Brien waiting on Camelot in behind. What will the favourite find? He's getting there now. Zip top leads from fencing. Here's Camelot almost on the bridle. Coming through on the near side. Oh, he's a good horse, all right. Oh, Camelot at leisure. Oh, a very smart horse indeed. He lives up to the hype and wins the Racing Post Trophy in tremendous style. Cool as you like. They came through on the stand side and won this race with plenty in hand. He's clearly a colt of some talent, huge amount of talent on this evidence. A last to first, just as he'd done at Leperstown three months ago, and what a confident ride young Joseph has given this son of Manjou, who quickened up apparently with total ease inside the final third and a half, and he's won without being asked any question whatsoever. He's run out to a two and a quarter lengths winner. And let's hope that this colt, this unbeaten colt, can build on it because he does look at a massively exciting prospect for Team Ballad Oil. Joseph, that looked like riding a piece of work. Incredibly, incredibly confident ride. Yeah, he's, um, I thought I was in the best horse in the race and um, he never really came off the brain. I just caught up with John Gosden who, who went out to greet, greet fencing and he said, you know, wow, that was yeah. incredibly impressive. Come the first Saturday in May, Camelot was all the rage to keep his unbeaten record intact. Down to the last six or seven now. Camelot on the far side of the purple jay. Looked a beautiful colt going to the start. Aidan O'Brien doubly represented here. He's won this race five times. And there are rumours he regards Camelot as one of the best he has trained. From the rear, Pamelot's got a lot to do at the moment. They race towards the final furlong and a half, running into the dip. Trumpet Major leads the way to Casper Netcher. Fencing is chasing hard. Camelot is running on very strongly now and coming through with French 15 on the far side. Ermeval leads that little group. Camelot coming through with French 15 on the far side. Ermeval. Camelot is just ahead from French 15. Camelot wins. Camelot narrowly to French 15. Ermeval third, fast side, Cudeville trumpet major, Ptolemaic top off a well beaten in the end, a favour has won, he's had to fight really hard, he's battled on tremendously gamely. Yeah, he's, he's a lot of class and he's a lot of speed, I was very happy on short to race, he was nice and relaxing, I always felt like getting there, he might get a little bit tired the last 100 yards, his first time of the season, but hopefully he can come on. Well, racing is a roller coaster game, and it's just weeks since Montjo, one of the best stallions in the world and one of the linchpins of Bally Doyle's breeding operation, uh, sadly died. Uh, he'd already had uh, a wonderful career, but there was plenty more left in him, so to speak. And this colt looks like a, being a wonderful replacement for him. He's, but as we said, he's by Montjo. He cost uh, 525,000 uh, guineas as a yearling at Newmarket. He's out of a mare that a lot of you remember called Tarfer, who won the Daily Stakes here in 2005. He's from one of the best uh, pedigrees in the stud book further back. But John, the thing that characterises this horse, this is a mile race, and some of these are beginning to feel the pinch already. He's still travelling. He's travelling, but look where he's travelling. He's travelling eight, ten lengths off the pace. You know, he's just... Um, he hasn't hurried him. You were saying beforehand that they didn't want to repeat of St Nicholas Abbey where they felt that they rushed him. But I think this is a different type of horse altogether. I think that he's got much more about him, much more scope. And I just think that he's won a shade cleverly and there's a fair bit more to come. On to Epsom for the derby. And yet again, he was sent off the raging hot favourite. Now Joseph O'Brien gets the work on the favourite Camelot. He calls on the Colt for an effort. He's racing to them very quickly, but getting away astrology is stable mates two, three lengths in front. Now Camelot is now turning on the, the, the uh, heat now. He's starting to run at uh, astrology on the outside. Camelot ranges up. Camelot takes a narrow lead from the stable mate astrology and now starts to draw away the first father-son trainer jockey combination to win the derby. Joseph O'Brien. 
I'm a big fan of Federico Tezio, whose most famous quote was about the Epsom Derby, that the thoroughbred depends not on the way we perceive it, but on one plank of wood. And Camelot in the Derby recorded a time of 2 minutes 33.9, that was worth a, a time form speed figure of 128, placing him amongst the fastest Derby winners of all time. And why Tezio liked that race was because it combined speed and stamina, which he believed were not extremes, but complements. And that day, Camelot showed what he did on other occasions over a shorter distance as well, in that he had the ability to travel really well, but also to do so for a long time. He had sustained pace, he had the ability to go through um, the pain barrier, to keep going, and to open out at the end of a testing mile and a half. It was one performance to rule them all. And I think those are the qualities which are transmitted down the generations. That's what Tezio was referring to, and that's what, why Camelot stood out. Next stop was the Cara, and despite the truly desperate conditions, Camelot became the first horse since Nijinsky in 1970 to land the 2000 guineas Epsom Derby Irish Derby treble. Inside the final furlong, Camelot and Ford to see. Testing ground, but Camelot has what it takes as they race up to the line. Camelot does the Derby double, wins it by about a length and a half. Now unbeaten in five starts, four of them at Group 1 level, it was on to Doncaster for the St Ledger. History beckoned, but the Triple Crown dream failed to materialise when Camelot was narrowly defeated by surprise winner Enki. Camelot in second, who's chasing Enki, but Enki's got first run and is going to deprive Camelot of the Triple Crown. Enki for Mikel Barcelona. Camelot, what might have been in second. The following month, he underwent colic surgery and unfortunately for connections and racegoers alike, Camelot would never again display the same brilliance that he had done at two and three. I, I thought Camelot was a beautiful model. He was a really good looking horse, a standout, a knockout looker, beautiful mover as well, and a very professional racehorse, settled very well, traveled very strongly in his races. Not really a typical monture, a lot of whom have had their quirks along with their brilliance. So he was a, I think he was a more manageable module, and as such, I think he could be a very interesting standing in the future, carrying on that brilliant uh, horse's line. The only three-year-old by Monture ever to win a Group 1 over a mile, Camelot is out of a Group winner by King Mambo, who in turn is out of a stakes winner by Dane Hill. The latest season saw three different Epsom or Irish Derby winning sons of Monture, all sire Group 1 winners, headed by the brilliant arc winner Trev, and one of France's leading two-year-olds, Ecto. Well, Camelot, one of the most talked about horses of his generation, for sure. More words spent discussing his relative merits than perhaps on any other horse I can remember. But what we possibly never talked about enough is what he actually achieved, you know, the bare bones of what he achieved, which is quite straightforward. He's a champion European juvenile, courtesy of that devastating performance in the Racing Post Trophy, but also a champion three-year-old. So he had the speed to win at a mile, which of course very few sons of Marja have won Group 1 races at a mile. They've been tremendously successful over middle distances, but to win a Group 1 race at a mile and then go on and post a very impressive performance in the Derby and win the Irish Derby on ground that was unsuitably heavy in truth. And that possibly tells its own story about the rest of his career. But a really notable achievement. He's a tremendous horse, Camelot. When you think of his first five races, he won them all, and four of them were Group 1 races, from the Racing Pulse Trophy onto the 2,000 guineas at Newmarket. Just elegance all the way down the hill at Epsom when he just ran away with the Derby. He showed that he had courage as well as class in the Irish Derby under very, very demanding conditions. And all in all, a terrific course. I remember Camelot as a racehorse as a really elegant athlete. He had this flowing power that just made other horses look fairly ordinary in comparison. I stood next to the winning post as he won the derby and I kept looking up at the big screen and looking down the track and I've seldom seen a derby won so far from home. It was all a question of dial the distance in the final furlong and a half and not many horses can run dead straight, gun barrel straight down that Epsom camber and he hardly broke stride. He was a very, very gifted athlete over a range of trips. A European champion at two and a European champion again at three. Camelot, a true legend of the turf.